Good morning, good morning, good morning, everyone. Hope all is well and everything is all right. So we are looking, I think we did 4142 last class. We're looking to get into 43 today. Any general questions before we get rolling? Sent you guys an email with your final exam details. I think I told you I was gonna send you that, but final exam details, um, date and time. Our final exam is on the 5th, August 5th, during regular class time, get those two hours, two hour block. So yep, 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 take a look at that, uh, see if any questions, um, you know, just everything that I stated before, but just written so you can have it at your disposal, be able to review. Hi, Professor, I have a question. Yes. What would be the last chapter of homework that we are doing? Chapter four. Oh, chapter four. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we'll do four, three, maybe four, four today. I know we're going to do finish four, three. Um, I don't know. I may push four, four to next class. We'll see. But then after that, um, we'll just be preparing for our final test. Okay. So what about the homework that has like 8.1 and 8.2? Yeah, not going to worry about it. We didn't get to it. Okay. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Yep. Not a problem. All right. So uh, anybody else? Anybody else before we get in there? Good. All right. So 4.3 properties of logarithms. We have three rules. That we're going to start off with. We have the product rule, um, law base B of m times n. We can break it out or break it up or expand it into law base B of m plus law base B of n. So we also can reverse that process. If we have the addition of those two laws, we can bring them back together or condense it into law base B of m times n. So the same thing goes with the other two rules. Uh, you can take it one way and then reverse the process and go the other way with them. So we have log base B of M over N. We uh, can expand to log base B of M minus log base B of N. And then we have the power rule, log base B of M to the R power. You can bring the R down front and that'll be R times log base B of M. Those are equal to the same thing. Going up. All right, so let's look at using, uh, I already wrote it out, so I guess I want to erase it. Uh, so here, our original problem is law base four of 35. If all they wanted us to do was to expand that expression, I can break up that 35 into seven times five. And then that's law base four of seven plus law base four of five in its full expansion form. All right. So these relationships and rules will help us when we go and we get into uh, the next section when we'll be actually solving, uh, solving these logarithm equations. So using these relationships will help us there. All right, next one, log base, or well, log of 10x. And so notice there's no base there at all. So they assume you know there's a 10 there for the base when you don't see anything. Remember, that's your common log. So they assume you know that there's a 10 there. Now, we want to break this up or expand it out to this most simplest expression possible. Notice what I did here. I didn't break it up into 2 times 5 times x. I left it. Uh, left the two times five is 10 because I have a base of 10. And then I then I separated the X. And so what that allowed to happen was for the log, the common log of 10 to simplify to one. So don't forget that base log base 10 of 10 is going to be equal to one. 
according to our rules that we had last class. All right, any questions? Always want your most simplified expression possible. All right. And then C, law of base seven of 19 over nine, uh, 19 over X, excuse me. You would just break it up, law of base seven of 19 minus law of base seven of X. Addition, multiplication goes to addition. Division goes to subtraction. We talk about expanding it out. <clears throat> All right, next one. Natural log of e to the third power over seven. Once again, we have this log that uh, they assume you know what the base is. So if you see ln of x or ln of e to the third power, they assume you know the base is e there. So this natural log of e to the third power will simplify to just three. And natural log of seven would just be natural log of seven. <clears throat> Any problem so far? All right, so looking at E, we have law base five of seven to the fourth power. Only thing we can do with that is use the power rule and bring the four down front. And then that will give us four times law base five of seven. All right, and then F, still using the power rule, but the way the reason why we or the, the way we will be able to use the power rule is by recognizing that the square root written as a power is one half. And once you uh, recognize that, then you'll see that you'll be able to bring that one half down front, and that'll be one half natural log of x. All right, any qu uh, questions or problems with any of those examples? All right, can I scroll up? All right, so for the next one, we want to expand our expressions as much as possible. Uh, I guess I'll just scroll up. Here's our original in the black. We have law base A. And make sure you hold true to your bases. I didn't emphasize that earlier. Whatever your base is has to stay the same base throughout the whole problem. So make sure that um, you, know, you hold true to the base. If I have law base A, and then the rest of my right log x squared plus log you know, square root of y, but I don't write law base A there, then I'm actually writing a different expression altogether. You remember this base, if you don't see anything, they assume you know it's a 10 there. So I've actually said that my base is 10. So whatever your base is, you have to hold true to that throughout your, all of your expansion. Or if you're going to take it in reverse and condense it down to one single law, you have to hold true to whatever your base is. So make sure you, uh, you know, remember that. So here we have law base A of x squared times the square root of y. So I can expand that. by just writing log base a x squared plus log base a square root y. So remember if they're multiplying together to expand it out, I can use addition. And then from there, use a the power rule. That two that's on my x, I can bring it down front. The one half, that square root, I can bring that down front. And that'll leave me with that final expression of two log base a of x plus one half log base a of y.
All right, question on that. All right, next one. Log base six of the cube root of x over 36, y to the fourth. All right, so let me erase this. So first we uh, can use the initial relationship of division, log base six of the cube root of x minus log base six of 36y to the fourth. So notice that whole expression of 36y to the fourth is just over here in this following logarithm. So then when I go to break it up, I can break that up further and just recognize that if anything's in your denominator, it's gonna have this minus sign in front, you know, because this is applied to everything that's going on in here. So if it's in your denominator, it should have a minus sign in front of your log. If it's in your numerator, then it should be positive. So you can look at it that way. All right. All right, so now breaking this up further, we can use a power rule and this 36 that's in here. Notice my base is six. So if I can rewrite that number in terms of six, uh, that will help me to simplify this thing um, all the way down. So I can rewrite that 36 as six squared. And this would be my final expression, bringing the one third out down front. That'd be one third log base six of X. And then the log base six of six squared simplifies to just two. And then I bring my four in front and my last one, uh, four log base six of Y. All right, questions on that. All right, can we go to the next one? All right, so next one, or next exercise, we wanna go in reverse, we wanna condense instead of expand, so we wanna bring it down to one single log. So we're gonna use those relationships in reverse, the rules, use those in reverse. So we have log base four of two plus log base four of 32. So when adding two logs, if I want to condense them, I will multiply what the logs are being applied to. Once again, I want to emphasize that if these bases were not the same, then I would not be able to apply the rule. Our bases have to be the same. Okay. I can leave that there. So bring them together as log base four of two times 32, which is log base four of 64. Then when you are in this position right here, log base 4 of 64, you do want to ask yourself, is it possible to rewrite 64 in terms of 4, which is our base, to see if we can simplify it further? And of course, the answer is yes, because 64 is 4 cubed. And then log base 4 of 4 to the third power will reduce down to just 3. All right. Problems with A. All right, let's look at the next one. Here we have two log of 4x minus 3 minus log of x. Oh, somebody said something in the chat. Okay, not a problem at all. Not a problem. 
Thanks for letting me know. All right, so uh, we want to condense this, but before we do that, let's take all um, take any number that we have that's sitting in front of a log back to being a power. So that's what I did with that two. I took it back up as to a power using the power rule. So now we have log of four x minus three squared minus log of, log of x. All right, now that we have the minus sign, it's the only thing that we have to be concerned about. I can bring these logs together as one single log. And remember, subtraction means uh, when I bring them together, I'll actually be using division in the single log as a single log. So log of four X minus three squared over X will be my most condensed way of expressing um, this expression. See. Yep, gotta see. All right, any questions on A or B? All right. Okay, so the next one, four log base A of X minus two log base A of seven minus one half log base A of Y. All right, so you see the purple arrows. That's the first thing I'm gonna do. Take my, once again, just like the last one, take my uh, numbers that are sitting in front of my logs back to being powers. So that'll be log base A of X to the fourth minus log base A of seven squared minus log base A of Y to the one half. All right, so next thing we wanna recognize or take note of is the fact that I have two minus signs here. If you remember what I said about what's sitting in front of the minus signs, or your, your negative logs versus your positive logs. If it's positive, it's gonna be up in your numerator. If you have a negative sign or a minus sign sitting in front, then those numbers will be in your denominator when you finally condense this all the way to one single log. So these two are going to be in your denominator. All right. So I went ahead and squared seven. Seven squared is 49. And I brought these two logs together as one single log, 49 times the y to the one half, because those two would be in my denominator because of those minus signs. So I have log base A of x to the fourth minus log base A of 49 y squared. Now I can bring them together as one single log using division. So this x to the fourth over 49 y squared, y, y to the one half, excuse me. I might have said y squared before as well, but y to the one half. Or I can rewrite it as uh, x to the fourth over 49 square root y. So either one of those are fine. Because remember, square root and one half as your power are the same thing. All right, any questions? All right, you can scroll up. So that's it for expanding and condensing. Uh, you know, try those out, see if you have any problems. And uh, if you have any questions, always feel free to ask. So now the last thing out of this section is the change of base property or change of base theorem. So basically, remember what I mentioned before about uh, your calculator. For most scientific calculators, I don't even know if I can say most now, nowadays, technology is a little better than you know, what it has been. But for a lot of scientific calculators, the only logs that you have in your scientific calculator are your natural log and your common log. So you're talking about log base 10 or log base E. So if those are your only options, 
then you would need to use the change of base theorem or the change of base property in order to find the log of something with another base, you know, a base other than a 10 or E. So this is how we can do it. Uh, if you have log base B of M, I can either do log common log of M over the common log of B or the natural log of M over the natural log of B. Both of them will still give you the same number. Uh, they will have different numbers up top versus what they have on bottom. But once you divide them out, you'll get the same number. So I'll show you what I mean in a second. Now, if you have a calculator that gives you this option here, where uh, it gives you a, the opportunity to put a number in for the base and then put a number in for what's being applied to by the law, you don't even need the change of base theorem for the change of base property. We used to call it change of base theorem, but this book called change of base property. That's why I keep saying theorem. But um, if you have this option, then you don't even need to change the base property. Um, but you know, let's talk about it because the book has put it in here. Let's say if we want to find the law of base five of 140. You can do, like I said, you can either use the common law or you can use the natural law. So I'll show you both of them. So if I decide to use the common law, now whatever the base is. That's what goes down here. So that never changes, no matter whether you're using common log or natural log. Your base is down bottom. Think about base basement. Um, so log of 140 over log of five. I'll use the common log in, in red. Notice I get 2.14613 over 0.69897. Divide those out, I get 3.07. If I decide to use common log, Natural log of 140, 4.94164. Natural log of five, 1.60944. So notice I get two numbers that are different, top and bottom. When I divide them out, I still get 3.07. So either way, I'll get my 3.07. Just got to make a decision on whether you're going to use common laws for your transition or your conversion, or I'm going to use natural log. All right, questions on that. All right, any problems, any problems? So that is four, three. Can I go to the next page, everybody good? Let's see, do we wanna do 4.4 today? I guess we can. Any problems? All right, so um, yeah, we can just go ahead and do four four. Go ahead and knock it out. So it, we'll go ahead and knock out four four today. Um, so that'll put us. We'll have the twenty six, twenty eighth. No, not twenty six. This is Tuesday, Thursday class. We have the twenty seventh. 29th and the third. Uh, that's pretty much review days. I won't bring any new material in um, for the next, you know, three days. And then our, our fourth day will be our final exam day. So with that in mind, um, keep in mind that since I'm not next class, I will not be coming with new material. It will be based on you guys having questions or bringing questions to the table. You look at whatever review, whether it be test one, two, or three final exam review or whatever the case may be, you look at those reviews and either have questions on them or at least say, can you walk me through this problem? Something of that nature. If you don't have that, then I have nothing. And so it'll just be like, okay, well, see you next class. You know, uh, like I said, the reviews are already posted. Any questions you guys have, it doesn't matter if it's from chapter one, these would be the days for you to go ahead and get your questions in uh, without any type of new material being hit, with, hit on you, or dropped on you first you know, before uh, you ask a question. So just throwing it out there. Next three classes, if you don't have any questions, I don't have anything. You know, it's just new, all the new material, this is it. All right, so any questions on the next three days? Everybody good? Right. I guess I missed whatever you said. I'm sorry, I was like, I had to drop my son off. 
How you gonna do that? How you gonna <laughs> how you ask? You gonna come in late and then be like, you know what? I just missed everything you just said. You just asked if there was <laughs> questions about the next three days. Is I think I could watch the recording. I'm I'll be fine with that. No, you all good. I'll just mess with you because I can. Um no, all I was saying is that this is the last section as far as new material is concerned. So um our final exam, I sent the email out this morning. Our final exam, I believe it's eight five. Let me go back and make sure because I got another one on eight four. Just trying to make sure it's not y'all. Yep. Our next is our final exam is on eight five, which is a Thursday. Our last, you know, full day of class. So that means we have three days, two days next week, and then the Tuesday before this day as review days. I'm not going to bring new material, any more new material um, to class. It will be basically you guys asking me whatever questions uh, you have, whether it's from chapter one all the way up through chapter four. So and, uh, in chapter four, I'm sorry for interrupting. No, in chapter fine. four, we should just be complete up to 4.4? 4. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. yep. So that's pretty much what I was saying. Yep, yep, yep. All right. Uh, Wait, I have a question to ask. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, um, can we still send the test one and test two scratch work? Because I forgot to send you that. Yes, please. All right. Yes. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So, thank you for reminding me of that. So, make sure you guys send me that scratch work. Um, yep, yep, yep. So, it is necessary. All right. Anybody else before we look at 4 4? Pretty good. All right. So, exponential and logarithmic equations. So uh, the first relationship that uh, we're going to use to solve is um, uh, that's another name for it. Uh, but anyway, you just use the same base to solve. It's a, I don't know if it's identity one. I think it's identity. Uh, anyway, it doesn't matter. So it says if we have b to the n power equal to b to the n power. In other words, our bases are the same. We can drop the bases and just solve m equal to n. Whatever the exponents are, just use the exponents. All right. So the first one that we're going to try to use this on now, when you get these equations, all it's going to say is solve. Notice what it says right here, just solve. It's not going to say solve using the same base, the interim or same base property or anything like that. It's just going to say solve. So you're going to have an array of tools or techniques to be able to use. And no one technique, well, let me say it like this, no one equation is only specific to one technique. So there are going to be multiple ways that you can use to solve these equations. So even when we get, you know, we'll use this one, use different ones and everything like that, we'll get to an equation. You may say, well, couldn't I have used such and such to solve this? Yes, you could have. Um, but it just depends on if in that problem, I'm trying to show you another way. So that's why we didn't use the same base theorem or whatever the case may be. So yes, there will be multiple ways of solving these equations. Um, I'm just gonna do whatever I can to show you all of your multiple options when it comes to solving these scenarios. So just throwing it out there. So this first one that we're trying to emphasize is um, establishing the same base so that we can drop the bases and then just focus on our exponents. So in this one, I can change this 16 into a base of two. 16 is two to the fourth power. So that'll be two, three X minus, two to the three X minus eight power equal to two to the fourth. Now that our bases are the same, we have two as our bases, we can drop the bases and solve the remaining equation from the exponents. So 3x minus 8 equal to 4 is what we have now. And from here, we can solve our regular linear equation by adding 8 to both sides and dividing by 3. All right, any questions on the first one? All right, can I scroll up? All right, so the next one, 27 to the X plus three power equal to nine to the X minus one power. So I cannot change 27 into nine 
as far as powers are concerned, can't change nine into 27. So the easiest way to take care of this one is to change both of them to powers of three. And so 27 is three to the third power, nine is three to the second power. All right. Remember our goal is to change them both to the same basis. And the way we can do that is by changing them both to the powers of three, multiples of three. So also don't forget this rule right here, a power to a power means that you're gonna multiply your exponents. So when I look at three to the third raised to the X plus three power, and three to the second raised to the x minus one power. Now I have these relationships right here, these scenarios. My uh, exponents will be multiplied to each other. So now I can drop my bases and I have a regular linear equation. Three times x plus three, two times x minus one. Distribute, they give us 3x plus 9 equal to 2x minus 2. Now we want to get all of our terms with x to the one side, all of our terms without x to the other. So let's we'll subtract 2x from both sides. Subtract 9 from both sides. And x is equal to negative 11. All right, any questions, any questions? All right, so the next one, we're gonna use logs to solve. So natural log of B to the X power, just reminding you that you can use a power rule here, bring the X down front natural log of e to the x, that simplifies to just x. Uh, common log of 10 to the x just simplifies to x as well. So it's just showing you or just reminding you of different relationships. All right, so we're gonna use those relationships to solve. So we have four to the X equal to 15. So now in this type of situation, we cannot use that same base property that we use in the previous examples because I cannot rewrite four in terms of in any type of way in terms of 15, cannot rewrite 15 in any type of way in terms of four. So we're gonna have to do something different. So what I'm gonna do is apply a law, the law to both sides. You can use common log or natural log. Remember, we just saw in the change of base theorem, it doesn't matter which one you use, as long as you stay consistent. You can't use natural log on one side, common log on the other, or vice versa. So I can apply the natural log to both sides or the common log to both sides. Eventually, you'll get the same answer. Uh, a lot of times, they use the natural log. So natural log of 4 to the x equal to natural log of 15. Now I can bring the x down front because what I needed was to get this X out of my exponent so that I could have full access to it. And so that's what that allowed us to do. Uh, applying the natural law to both sides allowed me to be able to use the power rule and bring the X down front. So now I can divide both sides by the natural log of four. And that gives me natural log of 15 over natural log of four. So notice what's, what's going on here, I cannot, when I look at my final answer, I cannot cancel out natural logs and that leave me with 15 over four. Okay, so make sure we don't make that mistake. Natural log of 15 is a solid number because that's a natural, that's an application of natural log to 15. Natural log of four is a solid number. So you can't change it by just canceling out an application. So uh, just making sure we don't do that. So if they want the exact answer, this will be your exact answer. 1.95 will be the approximation. So just 
making sure we're okay with that. Questions on anything before we look at another one? All right. Next one, 10 to the X equal to 120,000. So the last one, the one we just did, we used the natural log and I told you it didn't matter which one you use. Normally you use natural log if it doesn't matter. Here we have 10 to the X power. So in this case, you're gonna use the common log because you have a base of 10 right here. It wouldn't make sense to use natural log when you can use the common log and actually cancel out that 10. So that's what we do. And that's what I wrote right here. You know, since we have a base of 10, we use the common log. So common log of 10 to the X equal to common log of 120,000. That log in 10 will cancel, leaving you with just X. Then you have the log of 120,000, which is approximately 5.08. Any questions? All right, can I scroll up? All right, so here we have 40 e to the point six x minus three equal to 237. All right, so once again, we need access to the X in the exponent. So what I'm gonna do is isolate the term with X as an exponent. So I'm gonna add three to both sides and that term is right here. You know, so I need to get that E to the point six X uh, by itself. So I'll add three to both sides. That'll be 40 E to the point six X equal to 240. Then divide both sides by 40. E to the point six X equal to six. And we're gonna apply the law to both sides. And so notice we, we're gonna um, use the natural law. And that's what I wrote there in the, in the red. Since we have the base of E, remember last time we had base 10, so that said use common law. Here we have base E, so that's telling us we need to use or be in our best interest to use the natural law. So I apply the natural law to both sides, the natural law and that E will cancel, leaving us with just, and I'll put this back, but this is what we're left with, 0.6X equal to natural log of six. All right, then divide by 0. 0.6. And uh, that will be your answer, approximately uh, 2.99. Excuse me. Any problems? All right, can I scroll up? All right, so here we have five X to the minus two equal to four, two X four to the two X plus three. So notice we have quantities at 
exponents. Once again, I still need access to those variables in our exponents. So I need to figure out a way to bring them down front or bring them down from the exponents. And uh, the way we'll do that is apply the natural law to both sides. So we'll have a natural log of five to the x minus two, then natural log of four to the two x plus three. All right, so now I can bring those exponents down front. And that'll give us x plus minus two times the natural log of five, two x plus three times the natural log of four. So don't forget natural log of five, natural log of four are numbers. So if I wanna simplify or expand this out, I can distribute the natural log of five and the natural log of four into their respective quantities. All right, so that's what I'll do. Distribute, let me erase this stuff. All right, so distributing natural log of five gives me X natural log of five minus two natural log of five, then distributing natural log of four. That'll be two X natural log of four plus three natural log of four. All right, so now our goal is to get all of our turns with X to one side and get all of our turns without X to the other side. So let me put that stuff back. What I did was I subtracted uh, 2X natural log of four from both sides and I added two natural log of five to both sides. So we want to... Yeah, so just writing what I did here. Yeah. All right, any problems, any problems? So we had multiple X's in our equation, and that's what we did there, get all of our turns with X to the one side, all of our turns without X to the other. Notice when we get to this equation down here, X natural log of five minus two X natural log of four equal to two natural log of five plus three natural log of four. So we still have multiple X's so since we have X in more than one term, now we're gonna factor out X. And that brings us here. All right, so I factored out X. And now that I factored out X, I have a single X now, and that's what I needed. I can divide the other uh, the quantity that's attached to X to the other side of the equation. So 
natural log of five minus two natural log of four, divide that into both sides. It cancels out on the left, leaving me with just X. And so my answer, my exact answer will be two natural log of five plus three natural log of four over natural log of five minus natural, two natural log of four. The approximation is gonna be negative 6.34. So if they want the approximation, then of course they'll tell you how many decimal places to round it out to and so on. And if you wanna throw this in the calculator the way it is, then you will have to use parentheses, you know. Any questions? All right. So the next one, we have e to the 2x minus 4 e to the x plus 3 equal to 0. So we have a quadratic scenario here in which e to the x squared is my first term and then minus 4 e to the x. We talked about this before whenever you have this piece right here being squared in the first term um, that is considered a quadratic scenario or being squared in either one of your terms. So if we let u be equal e to x, we can simplify the equation to make it look more familiar to what we normally are used to dealing with. Uh, so that'd be u squared minus four u plus three equal to zero. All right. Any problems before we keep going? Make sure we're okay. All right. So solving it quadratically. So, you know, if you wanted to use the quadratic formula, you could. Um, I just went ahead and factored because it was an option. Um, that gave me u minus three times u minus one. And solving that will give me u equal to three and u equal to one. So don't get too excited here um, because remember we didn't start off with u as a variable. Uh, so don't write your answer as three and one. You got to sub e to the x back into the equation for u. And so we have e to the x equal to three, e to the x equal to one. Now to get access to e or to solve for e, we will apply the natural law to both sides so that that e can cancel and leave us with just x. So the first one will have x equal to natural log of three. And then in the next one, e equal to natural log of one. And don't forget the log being applied to one no matter what the base is, it's going to be zero. All right, any questions? All right, can I scroll up? All right, got a few more. So another scenario or another uh, option to be able to help you solve, <clears throat> excuse me, is going from log form to exponential form. One of the first relationships we talked about when introducing log and exponential. So it's log base b of x equal to y, b to the y equal to x.
So the first one under trying to uh, emphasize this option, we have log base four of X plus three equal to two. So if I wanna write this in exponential form, my base is four, that stays the same. If my base is, if the base of my log is four, then the base of my exponent is gonna be four. So then that'll be four squared equal to X plus three. All right, go to square root of four, 16. Then solve for x, we had, uh, subtract three from both sides, x is equal to 13. Any questions before we look at the next one? All right. All right, next one, three natural log of two X equal to 12. Hold on a second. All right, so here we have three natural log of two X equal to 12. So we wanna isolate that natural log by dividing both sides by three. So it's natural log of 2x equal to 4. So if we're trying to use the idea or the transformation from log to uh, log form to exponential form, first thing we do need to recognize is what is our base, right? So natural log, remember we've been saying all along, the base is e. OK, so if the base is e, I can rewrite this as e raised to the fourth power equal to 2x. And if that's the case, we can divide both sides by two now to get x by itself. And that'll be e to the fourth over two. Any questions, any questions? All right. Any questions before we go to the next one? Make sure we're good. All right. So in the next one, we have natural log, well not natural log, log base two of x plus log base two of x minus seven equal to three. So here, because we have multiple logs, we will go ahead and use our um, um not product multiplication rule. Yeah, product rule. Yeah, product rule. Use our product rule to condense our logs. We have the same basis, so we can do it. And so that's what I did here. Log base two of x times x minus seven equal to three. And remember the method that we're emphasizing in this section of the lecture is to uh, rewrite the log form in exponential form. So that's what I did where my base is two. Uh, basis two. And now my three that's over here is going to be the power. And then whatever law is being applied to will be on the other side of the equation. So we have two to the third power equal to x times x minus seven. All right. Now we can solve it as a regular uh, quadratic equation. Distribute the x, x squared minus seven x on the right. Subtract eight from both sides. So we have one side equal to zero. So now we have x squared minus seven x minus eight equal to zero. And now we can either factor it or use the quadratic formula 
I decide the factor x minus a equal to zero, x plus one equal to zero. And if we solve them out, we get x equal to eight and x equal to negative one. So you see right here, I wrote that we need to check. So before we check though, I wanna make sure everybody's caught up, everybody's okay. All right, so let's check it. This is our original equation. So if I were to put eight in there, um, obviously free to throw it in the calculator, I just did it by hand. Um, turn the eight into two cubes, so the, the law of base two will cancel out and leave with just three. Eight minus seven is one. Any log applied to one is zero, so three plus zero is three, so that checks out. Now, plugging in negative one, um, notice the first one. If I plug negative one in for x, log base two of negative one, you cannot take the log of a negative value. All right, so even if, uh, and then when we get to this next one as well, that still puts us in the same situation, log base two of negative eight cannot take the log of a negative value. So it's not that X is equal to negative one, it's the fact that when I plug in negative one and try to reduce, it would not let me do it. So it's okay for my solution X to be negative. It's just that what happens when I plug it in, you know, will I be taking the log of a negative? Um, for, an, for example, if I had log of, uh, let's say X plus five. Well, when I plug in negative one here, I'll be taking the log of four, so that's okay. So it's not about X being negative. So I don't want you to think that, well, if my solution ends up being negative, then I can't use that solution. It's not about X being negative, it's about when I plug in X, am I taking the log of a negative when you simplify and everything's said and done. So uh, just throwing that out there. Uh, so X equal to eight is a solution. X equal to negative one is not a solution. So even if you don't check it all the way, like I did with the eight, you at least want to make sure you're not taking the log of a negative. Um, you should check it all the way, but like I said, um, you at least have to check the negative part. All right, any questions? All right, I scroll up. All right, so I think this is our last one. Yep, this is the last one out of this section. The one-to-one -one property for logs is very similar to the same base property. Um, if you have log base four of M equal to log base four of N, we can drop the logs. and then just solve what was being applied to by the logs. But once again, you have to have a single log on both sides of your equation and the bases have to be the same as well. All right. So the first one under this, uh, property, we have log or natural log of x plus two minus natural log of four x plus three equal to natural log of one over x. So first thing I did was condense my logs. Um, the one on the right is fine. That's a single log. Over here, I have more than one log, so I need to bring those together. If I have subtraction in between my logs, quotient rule means I can bring them together by dividing what's being applied to by the logs. So that's what we have going on here. And since I have a single log equal to a single log, both have the same basis, I can drop the logs now. 
and I have x plus 2 over 4x plus 3 equal to 1 over x. All right, any problems? All right, so once we have this set up, we can cross multiply. That'd be x times x plus two, one times four x plus three. If you distribute, that'd give you x plus x squared plus two x on the left, four x plus three on the right. Now, since we have a quadratic equation, we're going to set one side equal to zero by minusing or subtracting 4x and 3 from both sides of the equation, giving us x squared minus 2x minus 3 equal to zero. All right. Fall it out, now fall it out, factor it, and set each part equal to zero, and solve. And if you go plugging them into the equation, this one ends up not working. Um, and the first one does work. X equal to three works. All right, questions, questions, questions. All right, that's it. So um, that's it for 4 4. Those are your methods um, that you'll be able to use, tools, techniques that you'll be able to use in order to be able to solve these equations. So, um, is everybody done copying before I scroll up? Everybody still copying. All right. So just making sure we're clear how we operate moving forward. If I can get to some scratch work for it in the end of the page. All right. So next week, looking at the 27th, 29th, August 3rd, August 5th. Those are the days that we have left in class. All right. So basically we'll be reviewing each one of these days. Hold on a second. Final exam on this day. Our class is from 11 to 1. So you have those two hours at your disposal. Um, around 1.30, the makeup will pop up. If you want to take advantage of that, remember the highest score up there that you can get is a 75. Um, yep, 75. So that doesn't mean, and I think I explained to you guys before, if not doing it again. Um, that doesn't mean I'm going to take 25 off of what, um, like, yeah, it doesn't mean I'm going to take 25 off of whatever you score, because I know people have asked that before. Just want to make sure we're clear. It just means that the cap on the highest you can make on the final exam, you know, to try to keep fairness to the integrity of the course and all the stuff like that is a 75, because, um, you know, that is supposed to be a proctor moment. You know, the final exam is really not supposed to be um, finessed or finagled in any way. So uh, now a 75 when your final exam would not stop you from getting an A out of the course. Everything leading up to it can though. So that's why you wanna make sure your grade is solid moving into the final exam. Um, but a 75 when your final exam wouldn't stop you from getting an A out of the course. Um, you know, lower grades can, you know, a 20 on the final could stop that. But, um, you know, uh, that's why um, basically if you get something less than a C, that's what the makeup is for. If you get something less than a C. Um, on your final the first time when we proctored. 
let's see, let's see, let's see. Think, trying to think of anything else. Um, the, the makeup is not time. Your product, it is time. You know, you have only have the two hour block, uh, but the makeup is not timed or proctored. Um, but you do have to take this final exam first. So make sure you are, uh, everybody's on it, everybody's straight. So questions on anything, questions on anything. So once again, next classes, next three classes, I'm um, not bringing any new material. It will be on you guys to uh, bring me what you have. All right, any questions or concerns before we close today? All right, you guys have a good one, be safe. Uh, have a great weekend, take advantage of this weekend, see if you have any questions, tally it up and uh, we'll knock them out on the next class. Everybody take care. Oh, somebody said something in chat. All right. Thank you. Thank you.